car company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, McDonald Carey. Tonight's story, Incident at Lancaster. My name is Lee, Captain Daniel Lee, 3rd Massachusetts Regiment. I joined the Continental Army right after the Battle of Trenton. And now, the year 1782, I'm attached to General Hazen's headquarters at Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm a plain man. Nothing out of the ordinary about me at all. Come to think of it, maybe that's just why General Hazen sent for me that particular morning. When I arrived at his headquarters, he got straight to the point. This is the situation, Captain Lee. It's a serious one. In the last six months, 40 British soldiers have escaped from our prison camp at Lancaster and found their way back to British lines. It's got to stop. That's why I sent for you. Yes, sir. Now, what do you think of this scheme? Suppose I put one of my own men into Lancaster, disguised as a British prisoner. Oh, I see. By pretending to be a British prisoner, he might get wind of how the trick is done. Is that it? Exactly. Good idea, sir, if, if, if it'll work. I reckon it might. General, the uh, man will have to be pretty well disguised. Simple, my boy. Nothing to it. I'll take a medium-sized man, uh, like you, for instance, Lee. Dye his hair black if, uh, like you, he happens to be fair. Give him a week's growth of beard, and I'll wager even your own mother won't recognize you. Me, sir? Next time we get a batch of red coats, we'll put you in the stockade with them. Oh, I see. Now, in the meantime, get acquainted with your new self. You're no longer with the Third Massachusetts. From now on, your name is Peter Graves, a lobster back. But that means passing myself off as an Englishman. I, I have no British accent. You'll be a Tory. You'll pass yourself off as a loyalist to the Crown. From now on, you're fighting for the right to keep on licking King George's boots. And you've no use for these Yankee rebels. Well, I, I never thought I'd have to say another good word for old George. Now, um, there's one thing I must warn you about. Wearing a British uniform, you'll be safe enough in camp, but once outside, you run the risk of falling into British hands. And if they find out who you are, well, you know what that means. Don't worry. I don't aim to be shot as a spy. Very well. You have your orders. I'm counting on you. Don't forget the name, Peter Graves. Peter Graves. It'll take a while to get used to that. Hey, you have a week to forget Captain Daniel Lee ever existed. See that you make a good job of it. Your life may depend on it. So, two weeks later, as Peter Gray's, I found myself outside the 3rd Massachusetts Regiment and inside Lancaster Prison. Despite the fact that I couldn't recognize my own face when I looked in the mirror... I couldn't believe that the redcoats wouldn't see through my disguise straight off. But nothing happened. Time passed. I began to get discouraged. Until one day, out in the yard, an old woman selling apples came around the corner of the stockade. Apples? Nice red apples. Not today, thank you, ma'am. Juicy, fresh apples. Sweet and ripe as the lips of a girl. <laughs> Not today, old We'll have an apple. Apples? Apples? Apple for you, red coat? Well, thank you, ma'am. Don't mind if I do. One halfpenny. All right. Yeah. There you are. Say, these are beautiful apples. Mm. You must be a new one. I don't recollect your face. Uh, the rebels captured me most a week ago. Just sort of getting my bearings. Mm, mighty peculiar. You sound like a Yankee. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a loyalist. My name is Peter Graves. Oh, Mm, it's mighty fine eating apple. Do uh, do you come to camp often? Most every day, yes. I, I sell cakes, meat pies. I'm just a poor woman trying to do her best. And a hard time I've had of it since the trouble with my boy. Oh? What uh, kind of trouble? Oh, dreadful trouble, dreadful. My boy was a volunteer in the Continental Army, a private in the 3rd Massachusetts Regiment. The 3rd? The 3rd uh, Massachusetts? That's right. You ever fought against them? Well, I... I've been in battle with them. Oh, you don't say. Well, you're not apt to have fought my will. He wasn't long with them. Oh? 
Uh, why not? Mm, those Yankees had him put in jail. And all because he brought home a blanket or two and a few trinkets. Thinking of his old mother he was. And uh, is he still under detention? Oh, not him, no. Oh, then uh, I suppose he's back with his regiment. I'll not get him to do any more soldiering for him. He deserted. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't blame him, but uh, what if they found him again? Ah, those Yankees, they aren't smart enough to catch my will. Sure, it stands to reason they wouldn't be rebels if they had any wits. <laughs> you know, uh, come to think of it, that's... Uh, Real nice of them letting you come into this camp with your wares. And why shouldn't they? <laughs> now I ask you, what harm could an old woman like me do? What harm indeed. I wondered. I decided that the old apple woman was definitely worth watching. But she didn't come back to the camp the next day, nor the next. And I began to worry that something I'd said might have made her suspicious. Then I ran into the biggest piece of luck I ever hoped to see. One night, I was lying on my bed in the barracks, wide awake, although it was very late. Suddenly, the door opened, and a figure crept into the room and bent over a bed just down the road from me. It was the apple woman. I lay very still and listened. Wake up. Wake up, soldier. Hmm? What, what, what's that? Oh, it's you. I'm sorry. I meant to stay awake. Is everything ready? All ready. Hurry now. Take your boots and meet me outside. I, I got another man to waken. Right. Yes. Now, let's see. Third bed down in the second row. Yeah. Oh, yes. This must be it. Here, you. You, wake up. What's that? Uh, what do you want? You have the guards on us with your noise. Follow me quickly. Follow you? I've no where? time for silly questions. Uh, if you've lost your nerve, stay where you are. We don't want any cowards along. Wait, wait. Uh, I'll come. One minute while I get my boots. Hurry now. Follow me. What took you so long? Mm, this one wasn't so sure that he wanted to come. Who are you? I thought Jeffrey was the man chosen to go. The plans were changed. I'm going in his place. Leave off the speech, Athian. We've had enough talk. You're still a long way from escape, me buckos. Oh, yes, but uh, how are we to get by the sentry? Never mind the sentry. He's filled up on my own special cider. I promise you, he'll sleep well. Come on now. I'll lead the way to the woods, and I'll have you safe at the hut in no time. Your son will meet us there? Your son? That's right, laddie. It's my will who's to lead you back where you belong. The British Lions. <laughs> Open the door. You got them? Good. In with you quickly. No trouble, Mother. Never am I. Like always, son. It was well done, madam. I congratulate you. You're young? I am. And you must be Jeffrey. I'm afraid not. Peter Graves is the name. Graves? Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, it all happened so fast, I didn't have time to explain. Your mother told me to come along. It was a chance to get away from the Yankees, so I didn't waste time. I knew Jeffrey was supposed to come. I tried to tell your mother. I went to the bed you told me to, Will. I swear I did. You blundering old oh, fool. No, Will. No, it wasn't my fault. Leave her alone. It isn't her fault. I went to the third bed, just like you said. Fourth bed, fourth bed, you <laughs> stupid old cow. All right, get along now. Take your blubbering out of here. Yes, lovey, yes, I. I'm going. I'm going. I don't like to see women folk handle like that, and I don't aim to see any more of it. Yes, I must protest. Now listen to both of you. You might as well learn right now. You're both to keep quiet and do exactly what you're told. I'm in charge. You understand? Uh, well, I suppose we have very little choice. You have none at all. Now, Graves, I suppose you think you're pretty smart, weaseling in on another man's chance to escape. I don't like it. What would you have done? A chance to get back with your own troops? You expect me to say no... Besides, what difference does it make whether it's me or another? Well, the truth is I was paid for two. It wouldn't be worthwhile only for one. Don't let him come, man. But in the king's name, let's get out of here and on our way before they miss us. All right, all right. Wait, though. Not so fast. Now, you see this Bible? I want each of you to touch this Bible and swear never to reveal to a living soul how you escaped from Lancaster. Oh, I say, that's quite unnecessary. I swear? Oh, very well, I swear. Never to reveal how you escaped, so help you God. Never to reveal how I escaped, so help me God. All right, Graves. 
I don't see why I should take an oath. I wouldn't be apt to tell people how I escaped. Put your hand on this Bible and repeat after me. I swear... Just a minute. I'm not a man that likes words put in his mouth. You know, listening to you talk, I've got the feeling you and me have met before. I... I don't think it's likely. Yes. I could almost swear I know your voice. Will you get on with it? What's that? The alarm gun back at Lancaster. They've discovered that you're gone. Now we've got to move fast. Quick now. All right, you two. We'll stop a minute here. Good idea. Young's finding it pretty tough going. Uh, I'm afraid I'm a bit weak with this sort of thing. I wouldn't have made it without your help, Grace. Thanks. Stop your blasted talking. Now, not a word out of either of you while I signal. (whistles) Why doesn't the fool answer? Think something's gone wrong? Quiet. Yes. There it is. Now then, you two stay behind those bushes. Don't move from here and don't make any noise. It'll be the worst for you if you do. Our guide is hardly what one would call a friendly type, eh, Grace? Yeah, as far as he's concerned, it's a toss of the coin. He either saves us or shoots us. <laughs> well, I suppose in an enterprise like this, one must take what help one can get. How long do you think the trip will take? Well, let me see. The way I figure, we've traveled close to 20 miles. You wouldn't dare move us during daylight, so four or five more nights should do it. Oh, I hope I'll be up to it. I'm pretty well used up at the moment. It's almost on. You won't be going much further tonight. Well, we'll soon know he's coming back. All right, get moving. And follow me sharp. We've an open field across. Listen, man, can't you see the sun coming up? It'll be daylight in ten minutes. You can't keep going after daylight. I don't know my business. There's a farm just beyond those trees. I'm betting you down on a barn over there. We'll move on again tonight. Oh, uh, a farm. So uh, we have uh, friends in these parts, do we? I, I thought they were all rebels around here. You think too much, Graves. Come along now. Move fast and keep low. And remember this. One wrong move and I put a ball between your ears. Tonight on Cavalcade of America, MacDonald Carey is starring as Daniel Lee, a Revolutionary Army captain sent to Lancaster Prison Camp to discover how British prisoners of war are escaping. Disguised as Peter Graves, a Loyalist soldier, he soon finds an opportunity to take part in an escape himself. Guided by a deserter from the Continental Army, he and a British prisoner named Young have come to a farm and are about to hide in a barn. All right. Here's the barn. Get in quickly. I'll go up to the farmhouse and get some food. Food is the least of my worries at the moment. A bed is all I ask for. It looks like you've got one if you'll settle for hay. Ah, it feels right good to me. Young, you'd better be nice and spry when you wake up. You've a long way to go and I'm not waiting on stragglers. I'm going up to the house now. Don't stir out of here. Uh, Anybody going to be uh, looking out for rebels? Graves, you're too nosy by now. I just want to make sure the Yankees don't walk in on us while we're asleep. They must be all over the countryside by this time. Sounds to me like you're scared. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I'm... I am scared to death. And you would be, too, if I could ever figure out where I've seen you before. Well, I'll figure it out before long. Well, maybe we'll have some peace from that fellow for a bit. Ah, that's good to get those boots off. Graves, what in blazes are you doing? I figure if I stand on this box, I can see out of this window. See what? You better be wise and and take Will's advice and observe nothing. Could be dangerous, you know, knowing too much. Well, not much to see anyway. Not a landmark, so I'll know where we are. Wait a minute. What's wrong? A Yankee patrol. They're coming into the barnyard. What are we going to do? We can't just... Wait here for them to find us. They're talking to the farmer. He's shaking his head. Are they coming this way? One of them is moving towards the barn. Well, we've got to get out of here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's been called back. I guess the farmer's told them he hasn't seen us. 
Yes. It looks like they're leaving. Oh, that's good news. They're moving towards the road. What do we do now? We'll know in a second. Will's coming out of the farmhouse. Oh, that was a close one. For a minute, I was sure they were going to find us. Well, we're all right, I guess. There's the last of them going around the bend. Drake, get down from that window. I told you to get away from that window. Take your hands off me. quiet, fool. You'll have the Yankees back here. They couldn't have seen me through the window. I was well back. Keep your hands off me, understand? Sure, Mr. Graves, I understand. I understand right well. Now, we're going to change our arrangements. The Yankees about this barn isn't safe. They'll probably go to search the woods, but they could come back. Well, you're uh, not going to leave here in broad daylight. Not likely. But you'll be safer up at the house. There's a cellar there the Yankees will never find. I'll move you one at a time. All right, young, you first. Come along. All right, Earl. I must say I'm glad to get out of here. You'll uh, be right back for me, Will. Don't worry about that, Mr. Graves. <laughs> I'll take care of you. Never fear. <laughs> I didn't like the look on his face when he said he'd take care of me. I liked it even less when I found he bolted the door. I was sure now that Will recognized me as his former officer in the 3rd Massachusetts. I decided it was time to make tracks. Maybe I could catch up with the patrol in the woods and get their help. Luckily, Will had forgotten the window. No one in sight. There was a long drop to the ground, but I took a chance. So far, so good. Now, all I had to do was to sneak by the house. I tell you, he's a Yankee officer. Then suddenly, Will's voice made me stop. He I stood there for a moment and listened. He changed the way he looks, but I knew that voice the minute he barked at me out there in the barn. You must be mistaken. No. And I'm not taking chances with that yet. I'm going to take care of him right now. Oh, what's wrong with that dog? It's Graves. What? He's running for the woods. Stop him. We can't let him get away. He won't. I... You missed him. Never mind. He won't get far. I know these woods and he doesn't. He hasn't got a chance. Each time I start to listen, I could hear him coming behind me. He was getting closer. I knew I couldn't go much further. I was hopelessly lost and there was no sign of the patrol. There was only one chance for me. If I could climb a tree and swing down on him when he passed... I might be able to get his pistol before he saw me. So I got myself up in a tree fast. I waited. Sure enough, Will came along, moving right into position beneath me. He stopped. I drew in my breath, and I jumped. He's just a hand free and got at his pistol. He missed me. But Will wasn't through. Powerful jab in the ribs knocked the wind out of me. The next thing I knew, he had his hands around my throat. I'm going to squeeze every last breath out of you, you Yankee. That's why, man, here they are. Yankees. The Yankee Patrol. It was the Yankee Patrol. They must have heard the pistol shot. In a flash, Will took to his heels. Stop that man! Spread out! Don't let him get away! I'll take care of this one on the ground. Never mind me. There's a British prisoner hidden up at that farmhouse. Take the farmer in, too. He's in on it. Hurry, man, before they get away. On your feet, lobster bag. Don't tell me what to do. Now, wait a minute. I'm Captain Daniel Lee, 3rd Massachusetts. What? That's right, Lieutenant. General Hazen put me in Lancaster to find out how the prisoners were escaping. And you found out, didn't you? Captain, did you say you were? Look, I tell you, there's an escaped redcoat in that farmhouse and people who were helping prisoners get away from Lancaster. Go see for yourself. What have you got to lose? Well, might bear investigating at that. Bentley, Jackson, get up to that farmhouse. Hold anyone you can find. And as for you, my friend, you'd better be telling the truth. It happens to be the truth. Take me to General Hazen at once. Why, don't worry, Captain. I'll take you, all right? Come along. Jailer. Jailer, there's been a mistake. Ah, then, lobster back, settle yourself down. 
Nobody ever escaped out of this jail. But I tell you, I'm not a British soldier. We do things different here in Philadelphia. Lock our prisoners up right and tight. Listen to me. I'm an American officer. None of that. The lieutenant warned me. Don't listen to him, he said, if he says he's a Yankee. So it won't do you a bit of good. No, sir. You're here for the duration, lobster back, so you might just as well set your mind to it. Oh, what's the use? Well, now you're being sensible. Uh, tell me, uh, whatever possessed you to try a tall tale like that? Oh, never mind. Just forget what I told you. It's only... Wait a minute. You, uh, really want to know why? Well, Sure. I've, uh, I've been trying to get to General Hazen. General Hazen? Yes, I've, uh, I've some information for him. Very important information. That's so? What kind of information would you have that the general would be interested in? Oh, uh, about a little scheme of General Clinton's. A little surprise for you Yankees. A scheme? What kind of a surprise? Well, tell me. Maybe it's important. No, no, no. Not you. But, uh, you see, I, I, I figured it this way. If I tell the general what I know, he might be willing to make a deal. I'm sure of one thing. The general will be mighty grateful to anyone who puts him in the way of getting my message. Well, now, uh, <clears throat> just what kind of message would you want sent? Good. I knew you'd do it. Now, listen carefully. I'm going to write a letter to General Hazen. He's in Lancaster right now. See that he gets it as soon as possible. <laughs> Any word? No. No sign of that young fellow I sent off with your message. It's mighty peculiar. Well, something's gone wrong. Something must have gone wrong. I'm beginning to think I was crazy to ever believe that story of yours. Jailer. Jailer. Where are you? Listen, someone's here. Who's there? Oh, there you are. What kind of a confounded jail? General Hazen. My boy. Are you all right? Did you get them? We got them, both the apple woman and her son. Good. It was those two behind all the escapes. They had four or five farmers working with them, too. So, I've had a whole spy ring operating in my territory, most likely reporting to the British on every move we made. You've done a fine job, Captain. We're very grateful. Well, General, I'd be grateful, too, for a change of uniform and a change of duty. <laughs> you know what I mean. Back to my old regiment and back to winning the war. <laughs> Thanks to McDonald Carey and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, Incident at Lancaster. Next week, DuPont Cavalcade will present the popular screen star, William Holden. Our play, The Sitting Duck, tells an exciting and true story of an adventure that took place last July in enemy territory in Korea. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Incident at Lancaster, was written by Rosemary Foster, based on the book Wonderful Escapes by Americans, published by Houghton Mifflin Company. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With McDonald Carey tonight, you heard Frank Reddick, Betty Gard, Carl Harbord, Scott Tennyson, Eugene Francis, and Robert Dryden. Mr. Carey can currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Let's Make It Legal. Don't forget next week, our star, William Holden. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry.
next, Hollywood Theater stars Tyrone Power on NBC.